منزل uh, I want to talk about uh, surgical indication and uh, especially uh, endoscopic endonasal for uh, craniopharyngioma versus transcranial approach, uh, specifically frontoterional approach with or without uh, orbital zygomatic <coughs> approach. Uh, after uh, after surgery uh, of craniopharyngioma, unfortunately, we can observe 20% of uh, vision deterioration, 90% of hypothalamic dysfunction, 90% of uh, pituitary deficit, 90% of obesity, and uh, 50 percent of CCF leakage, specifically after transfernoidal surgery. So our mission as neurosurgeons is to treat, to operate if there is an indication, and uh, to avoid all this dramatic uh, complication. So before you enter to the OR, every neurosurgeon, he should uh, ask himself these two questions. The first one, should we perform gross total resection or near total resection followed by stereotactic radiosurgery? And the second question, which approach? For the, uh, for the first question that we saw uh, in the last uh, talk uh, by uh, Costantini, in the old period, 30 years ago, many uh, famous uh, neurosurgeons like uh, Yazaji, it was uh, the first uh, consecutive theory, about 144 patients. And all this uh, period, uh, all this author claim for gross total resection to uh, control the, the tumor. But uh, recently, uh, and uh, in this uh, last uh, 15 years, many papers come from uh, many centers, and uh, the results is not the same, and they claim we can do uh, near total resection followed by stereotactic radiosurgery. The control of the tumor is the same, and the outcome and the quality of life is better. So it's an example. Uh, I operated this patient uh, six years ago. It's classic craniopharyngioma with the cyst uh, part, with the solid part. There is no invasion. It's classed maybe uh, one. Uh, according to uh, Nicker's classification, and I operated with the endoscopic endonasal approach. This is the MRI at uh, G1. It was gross total resection. The surgeon was happy. There is no deficit. After three months, we can see here a small cyst just near the right hypothalamus. So we decided to follow up. wasn't sure if it is uh, just a uh, uh, scare or uh, recurrence. And after two months, the cyst was growth, and we decided to treat by a gamma knife. The cyst <coughs> shrinked after five months, and after five years, post GICA, there is no residue and there is no hypothalamic dysfunction. So we can have a very good result with near total resection, followed by stereotactic radiosurgery. The the paradigm is if we can do a gross total resection, go ahead for the gross total resection, especially if there is no invasion of the hypothalamus. But if there is an invasion, if there is a risk of hypothalamic syndrome postoperatively, it's better to do near total resection followed by stereotactic radiosurgery. For the second question, which approach? We have many approach and um, talking about uh, extended endoscopic endonasal approach and mm -hmm. frontotemporal okay. <coughs> approach. This is two cases of uh, craniopharyngioma, and it's completely different, and the approach is completely different. For the first case, we have a classic uh, cyst part with a solid part, but here we can see this is the ACA, this is the Sylvian uh, uh, artery, and uh, the, the tumor cross the internal carotid artery, and the cyst parts cause 
the temporal fossa. So it's a very good indication for transcranial approach. The transcranial approach is classical. We perform four burr holes for temporal uh, uh, frontal. I, if there is uh, an important extension in the supracellular compartment, I prefer to do an orbital zygomatic approach because the view is better for the superior part. And uh, after uh, we opening the, uh, the dura, we can work in different uh, working uh, area. This is the optic nerve, ipsilateral, contralateral. We can work uh, in the entire optic space. We can work also in the optical carotid triangle here, and we can work in the lateral part of the carotid. So all this corridor, we cannot reach by endoscopic endonasal approach. This is the surgical view. This is the optic nerve here, and uh, this is the carotid, and this is the tumor in the optical carotid uh, triangle. Laterally, we can see the posterior communicating artery, and we can also work uh, in this uh, lateral space. If the tumor is pre infundibular we can also respect the pituitary stalk, and we can see the pituitary stalk at the end of the, sur uh, the surgery. Uh, the best visual visualization of the pituitary stalk is uh, between the optic nerve and the carotid artery. This is a small video of uh, craniofrontal frontotemporal approach. We open the proximal part of the sylvian fissure. We expose the ipsilateral optic nerve. And after that, we go to expose the contralateral optic nerve here. And we can see the tumor between the both optic nerve. We can start with the debulking the tumor between the optic nerve to have some relaxation. And after that, we can also work uh, uh, in the lateral uh, triangle between the optic nerve and the carotid artery. The, the technique is a microsurgical technique. As you see, I don't use the bipolar, and I perform an intratumoral dissection. And when you work also in this uh, triangle, at uh, the last time, you can see the contralateral uh, carotid here. So uh, this space can uh, expose the majority of the tumor between the optic and the carotid. And the last part is the lateral to the carotid. This is the third nerve. Be careful for the dissection of this nerve because the morbidity is uh, important when this nerve uh, is uh, injured. And we can have a gross total resection, especially for tumor. Uh, lateral to the carotid. The other option is extended endoscopic uh, approach. For me, the best indication is not the size of the tumor. Uh, uh, the size doesn't matter, but the localization of the craniopharyngioma. If you have a craniopharyngioma in the midline, don't crossing the carotid artery, and especially in retrochiasmatic space, the endoscopic endoscopic <coughs> approach, it's a fantastic approach because the tumor is in your corridor and you can perform grosser total resection with the respect of the hypothalamus because you see the hypothalamus. In the frontotemporal approach, the, the vision of the hypothalamus, it's not good. This is a small video of endoscopic approach, it's extended approach, so you have to prevent uh, CCF leakage. We start with uh, performing uh, nasoceptal frap. It's uh, a simple uh, draft. Uh, we have to draw four lines. The first one is just under the nasoceptal artery. This is the superior, medial, and inferior turbinate. This is the anatomical view, surgical view. And this is the first line just uh, under the nasoceptal artery. The second line 
uh, one centimeter posterior to the tip of the nose, the third line to the <coughs> superior part of the septum, and after that we put our uh, our flap in the quana. After that we have to expose the anterior wall of the sphenoid sinus. It's very <coughs> important to open widely your sphenoid sinus, and after that you have to see <coughs> all the important LADMEC in the midline. <coughs> In the midline, the planum, the tuberculum, the cellar floor, and laterally, the optic nerve, the carotid artery, and especially the medial optical carotid recess and the lateral. For the craniotomy, it's very important to have a large craniotomy because if you don't go to the medial optical carotid recess here, you cannot see the emergency of your optic nerve, and you can damage your optic nerve if you don't see it. So it's very really important to have a good exposition. This is the anterior intercavernous sinus. We coagulate the anterior cavernous sinus. After that, we open the dura, and we are in front of the tumor here. The uh, technique is the same. This is the, the view before the, the dissection. This is the right uh, uh, optic nerve, the left optic nerve, the chiasma, the tumor here. This is uh, the superior epiphyseal artery, it supplies the chiasma and the optic nerve, so you have to respect uh, this artery, otherwise you will have a visual deterioration. Mes excuses, je rencontre quelques problèmes de connexion. Veuillez réessayer plus tard. Excuse me. <laughs> and after that, you have to do a debulking of the tumor. This is after the surgery, and we can see the hypothalamus at the end. Don't forget, the, the closure is a very important part of uh, the surgery. So we use the flap. This is the enhancement of the flap of the surgery, and we can do a gross total resection. Now, before, uh, when I started, I put uh, fascia lata, and after that, the flap and the fat. But now I put just the fat inside the defect, recovering by, by our fascia lata and the other uh, uh, of fat inside the sinus, uh, sinuid sinus. So there is no competition uh, between the different technique, between endoscopic, endonasal approach, between transcranial or microsurgery, and also between radiosurgery. <coughs> we have to use all this technique to uh, avoid complication and to give the best uh, approach for your patients. For conclusion, uh, can you find a trauma should be treated in tertiary cent uh, center? Uh, the experience of not only uh, the surgeon, <coughs> but all the team is mandatory to treat uh, this kind of, uh, of tumor. Endoscopic approach is an excellent indication for tumor situated in the midline without crossing the carotid artery. Transcranial approach is an alter alternative approach, especially if you have uh, uh, lateral part of the tumor, lateral to the carotid artery, and radio, uh, uh, radio surgery is an option, also is a serious option to treat recurrence or residue, or also if you have small tumors. Thank you very much. This is uh, our team, uh, composed with endocrinologists, neuropathologists, neuroradiologist, radio surgeon, radiologist also. <laughs> and uh, it's very important to work uh, with the team to treat cardiopharyngioma. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Master. You kept time very well. We caught up a lot of time. Actually, and it was very to the point, very nice videos. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Comments, questions? Just, just, just to mention, in, in the adult arena, Single shot radiation therapy also coined that radio surgery is more common. Whether you give it in, in gamma or whether you give it with, with an inner accelerator. <laughs> the pediatric population is considered um, more safe to give fractionation, full fractionation, 
not even FSR. I'm not familiar with any study comparing single shot versus full fractionation. Not for kids and not for adults. Um, but uh, we tend to give fractionated radiotherapy uh, therapy uh, because of the risk to benefit ratio in the surrounding of the tumor rather than a single shot. And in adults, it may be, I don't know. I completely agree, that, but uh, uh, as you know, in uh, by uh, GK, we can do also with multifractionated. It's not a, only a single. The question is, is what is better? And, um, there's no data. Yeah. Uh, there. We'll probably go to ask on more, more in, the, in the next session. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Do you perform um, SRS with uh, gamma knife SRS? In, in, yes. Do you yes. Yes. Examples in mind where you did it up front without taking this color? Uh, especially, uh, uh, example for uh, huge meningioma invading. Uh, no, for cranial pharyngioma. For cranial pharyngioma. Uh, Off the I, top of your head, probably not. No, probably the first yeah. uh, <laughs> surgery. Yeah, but, but we can do fractionated in other pathology, not in cranial pharyngioma, because the residue generally is very small. So, certainly a topic for discussion. Yeah. Thank you very much.